Um, I'm happy to introduce Kid Vantage this morning. I'm finally learning how to say it quite right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we, all, we all knew it in the past few years as Eastside Baby Corner. Actually, for many years we've known it as that. Um, we have Helen Banks here from Kid Vantage and our own Liz Rudolph who volunteers there. And Marie. Marie Bean also volunteers. Well, yes. Marie, thank you. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I roped her in. Good. And we just had a wonderful Christmas in July where there were all kinds of wonderful things brought in, including one last bag that somebody brought in. Oh, yay. Thank of, you. Near and dear to your heart, toys. Toys. Will you please tell us about you? I will indeed. Thank you so very much for this invitation this morning. Um, St. Andrews, individually, but as a congregation, have been supporters of Kid Vantage for a long, long time. And it is very appreciated in so many different kinds of ways. So it was really an honor to have this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about what we do, a little bit more about <coughs> why we changed our name after um, 30 plus years, and um, ways that people can help um, to do even more for kids in our area. So Kid Vantage, building a foundation for every kid's future. You know, when our beloved and late founder, Karen Rinlon, uh, started Eastside Baby Corner in 1990, she knew intuitively, she knew because of her professional training as a pediatric nurse practitioner, what kids needed, not just what kids need. You know, we always focus on the kid, but kids have families. They have parents, they have grandparents, they have foster parents. And they also need help. They need to be able to have those concrete assistance, those tangible goods, in order to carry out what they already know, what they want to do to take care of the well-being of their child. So those, that's kind of the gap that Karen saw. She was a, a practicing pediatric nurse practitioner, and, and families would come in, and she tried to teach them how to diaper, but they didn't have a diaper. She wanted them to, to practice safety with their child, but they didn't have plugs to stick in the, in the wall. But she also knew that kids needed the entire, it's a whole child kind of thing. So when she had the opportunity to start Kid Vantage in 1990, she went to a group of uh, fellow nurses, public health nurses, said, would this idea work? And they said, yes, please, please help us out, this would be great. So she began collecting a few things in her living room, under her dining room table, and it just grew from there. Um, almost near the beginning, uh, she went started asking Skip Rowley over at Rowley Properties in Issaquah if she could have space, and Skip was eventually talked into getting, getting a unit, and then, a bigger unit, then more units, and so today we are in a um, we are in just about every unit and part of the building we were moved into in 2006, late 2005, 2006. Um, Rowley Properties still provides a good share of the rent. We also pay a lot of rent at this point because we have expanded to almost 12,000 square feet of space. Oh no, the projector. She told me that. I forgot. So, again, who is Kid Vantage? We help children have what they need to grow, play, and to thrive. And we do it by providing essential health care. Um, safety goods for all kids who are experiencing systemic um, oppression, poverty, homelessness, um, and other kinds of, of systemic inequities. But the other distinguishing thing is we don't deal directly with families. We work with 75 plus partner agencies Oops. 
this over there, um, across central Puget Sound. So that's the reason, one of the reasons we're no longer East Side Navy Corner, because we are helping kids in King, Kitsap, Snohomish, Pierce, and Mason County. We have locations in Kent, Shoreline, Bremerton, and Issaquah. Um, but no matter where we are, we still work with the same model developed by Karen many years ago. And that is you, the supporter, whether you're doing wonderful collections. Oh, I know shoes. <laughs> Nothing like a baby shoe, right? Okay, baby socks are also totally cool. Whether it's collecting those things at a drive and then they're new, or whether it's you're cleaning out your closet and donating the things that your kids and your grandkids are no longer using, whether it's giving dozens and dozens, countless hours, um, I'm pointing at you, um, who give their time because we have, even though we have a, a very, we have a very lean staff, we have only 21 people who cover all of those different um, areas, and but we so we depend still the the entire model of Kidvantage is to be volunteer centered. Last year, volunteers contributed um, just under twenty two thousand hours. Um, that was a, a growing growing from from the worst of the pandemic, but still way behind where we were pre pandemic. This year, it looks like it'll be closer to 25 to 26,000, which is starting to get creeping up a lot closer to where we were at about 30,000 before the pandemic. But those volunteers, wherever, whatever they're doing, they're sorting the goods that come in, they're packing the orders, they're getting them ready for those partner providers who order online for a child. And those tiles, those orders can be completely customized. Am I right, Liz? So if they ask for a Barbie with a pink dress, your team? We give them at least a Barbie. And you'll do your best to do it with a pink dress, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> no, they're not always able to do it, but there's a lot of little baby corner miracles, and I'll still call them a baby corner miracle, that happen. They just don't expect that you're going to find those things in the pile, but they do happen. So they put in those orders. Every week, the orders close at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Volunteers start get the pull tabs, start filling those orders almost immediately afterwards. Those providers come to one of our, our hubs the following Thursday, pick up the completed orders, and deliver them to the family. So, what we do, we're working with these partners, they're able to assist their families, and then the families are able to get what they need. Um, so, this is what is accomplished. This is the change that happens because of supplying those kind of tangible goods. Kids are feeling safer, more secure, confident, and ready to learn. These are some of our recipients. So we often talk, you hear the word essential, so you hear the word basics. What's important to know is what we're providing is what we know families need, and we know it because that, they send that message through their providers, the providers order it. And you know what, what we call basic or essential don't get hung up on it's just food or formula. It's what is important for a child to thrive. And you need a winter coat. You need to feel like other kids. So we do Halloween costumes. That's where uh, Liz's group is going to take over the unit where the Halloween costume crew is right now. Right now, we're filling Halloween costumes. And we'll give out hundreds of Halloween costumes. And then we have some kids who have the joy of receiving things in the winter holidays. Um, it is also a place where people come together. I talked about the volunteering. There's so many different people from all over. We sadly had to say goodbye. 
it's not our choice, it's the Mariner's choice, so I'll, I'll let it go. Um, to our dear friends, um, Paul and Molly Sewell, because they had started strikeouts for kids, and they personally made a donation um, in 2022, $200 for every strikeout that Paul threw. This year, they committed to $400 for every strikeout, and they also used their own social media and leveraged that to get donations from all over the United States who, who pledged money per strikeout. So last year, the um, Strikeouts for Kids brought in um, about $75,000 for um, Kid Vantage. Um, this year, actually, because of the people that the Seawalds are, even though um, the Mariners moved them on, they did not move on from us and they kept their commitment um, to Kid Vantage. But that's just one kind of example. Up in that corner there, those are all those drives, like, like your, um, what do you call July. it? Christmas in July? Thank you. So we have, um, every year, around 200 drives that are run from diaper derby and you guys are a diaper derby group um to what is we just finished off was pencils and pants and that's back to school to winter wish givers which is about warm clothes and toys for the winter um and we will we do these all year long and people from from young people to um, businesses all contribute and that is huge they contribute on um, those drives bring in um, at an in-kind value somewhere between a quarter and a half million dollars worth of goods every year so it is a huge part of our ability to help kids okay, one of my favorite pictures ever Somebody donated, I, I can't even remember now, cartons and cartons and cartons of these green coats. And it was a blessing because winter coats are so hard to come by. But we, we also, there was, we often would walk down the street in our own cities and see a kid in a green coat and we knew where it had come from. So, Last year in 2022, and I've got these numbers over here too, so you can you can you don't have to memorize everything on the screen. Um, we did just under 177,000 orders. So an order. There's a lot of different things that can become an order. An order is what we receive from that provider. That they've 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 gone into our very sophisticated online system. They put in the name of the child their height, their weight, their age, and then they can choose from a catalog of about 250 items that they need. And then when we package them together, they're, they're in order. So an order could be, it, it could be a one single bottle of shampoo, it could be an order of, of age-appropriate toys, it could be a big bundle, which is, um, a lot of clothing plus toys plus books if it's a big bundle plus um, plus toothpaste and toothbrush so um, there's a lot of variety in there and there's a lot of diapers so that's why it's hundred and seventy six thousand five hundred eighty seven orders but we gave out 5.5 million items so that's all the stuff that goes inside of those those orders and that doesn't even count all the stuff that we sorted and moved on. So you can see um, volunteers are highly needed. You're, you get to do a lot of things and feel really good about it when you're there because you have a lot to do. Last year we had 81 service partners and our service partners run from the Bellevue School District to um, Imagine Housing um, to uh, some of our some newer organizations that are working very specifically with different um, new groups of people like um, the Somali Health Board so it's a large group it's a very wide variety of types of partners that we have so just to give you from here and here to a snapshot of what that means so 
10,441 bundles of clothing went out. Those include the layouts for the newborns, and it also includes a small amount, about 250 uh, bags of maternity clothes. Um, those are the only adults that we assist are um, expectant or immediate postpartum moms. And then about 1.9 diaper changes. No, sorry. No, um, how well we did it. So last year, we were filling huge amounts more than we had in the past. We averaged 3,500 orders per week. I'm, I'm really proud to say that we did that with a 97% fulfillment rate, especially with the formula crisis that we had last year. Um, it took a lot of volunteers and staff scraping <laughs> grocery shelves, shelves all over the place to be able to find enough formula to do that, but we managed to fill all but three orders during that crisis. So we were able to assist just under 15,000 children and expected moms last year. Only about just under 3% of that number are the are expected moms or immediate postpartum moms. So the majority of them were children. And about 65% of the children are age four and under. But it's really important to emphasize that 35% of 15,000 is a lot of kids that are age 5 through age 12. So not to age 12, through age 12, through 7th grade. So this is what we look like in 2015. This is our service area. So we have just the site in Issaquah at that point in time and we're, we're reaching organizations and families in that in this area this is where we are today and we did this growth not just because we like to grow because it's not easy to grow we did it because there are so many children and families who need assistance you know, um, in our area, so if, if you're, if we look at like average median income, and if you're in the, the low range of the average median income for this whole region, and, and I'm going to be a little fuzzy on the numbers because they change from <coughs> East King County to North King County, but not, not substantially. So for a family of four, um, you're, if you are at 50% of that or below 50% of the average median income, you are making somewhere between fifty dollars and $60,000 a year. That sounds like a lot, but a self-sustainable wage, a living wage in our area is about $130,000. So it doesn't matter if that most of the families that we assist have at least one full-time working adult. There's a big gap there. And um, families are the, the tangible goods that Kvantage provides are doing all of those other things we talked about, but they're also a financial offset. You can keep families in housing, not because of giving them uh, supplying diapers, $100, $200, $300, $400 a month can make a lot of difference. So, as you all know, we are a community up organization. And so there's a lot of ways that you can help. Um, and a lot of you are already doing those things. Because one of the things about Kvantage is we are not just an organization that helps kids. We're an organization where you get to help kids. And the impact that you're going to have, it, it sometimes you, you can feel it. When you go in to fill a bundle and you're putting in those clothes, you're, there's a child, there's a story behind every single label. And whether it's one time a year that a family needs a little bit of help, 
or whether they need diapers every single week because that's where they are at. When you're working here at KidVantage, you're supplying the things that really make an impact. And it's more than just how people feel. You are literally, when you're relieving the stress on a child, the toxic accumulative stress that happens because of persistent poverty and family disruption, you are literally helping that brain grow because persistent and toxic stress actually interrupts the architecture of the brain. And so it also causes long-term damage within the body. So even though this child may be this big now, if we don't in intervene, if we don't help promote the healthy development of that child, their brain does not develop as well, their body develops long-lasting stress-related illnesses, so that when they're 35, they have diabetes. They did start to develop heart issues. They have high blood pressure. Those, those, that's a legacy of childhood stress. But the other thing that happens is that as, and I think if most of us look inside, we can relate to this. There's always been moments when you as, a, as a, an adult caregiver, whatever your role may be, could not do something and there is a temporary stress or disruption in your family. You know that you are not able to function as clearly as you do normally. What happens when people are in that day after day after day? It starts to alter their ability, their executive function ability. And that just simply means, in everyday kind of language, is that they can only see this far because they can only see what has to happen next. I need a diaper. I need food. I can't take care of my child then their concern about not being able to take it loads onto even more stress and they're less able to cope. If you're like this, then you're not able to look at ways you could get into housing, increasing your education, getting other kinds of resources in the community. But when you come in and you bring in your beautiful toys and you bring in clothes, and you contribute so during diaper derby and we're able to help those families and instead of being right here it's out to here and then our provider partners that are working with them helping them get jobs housing schooling moving on they're able to start to hear what's going on so we know that when when a provider partner comes and brings diapers or toys or clothes <coughs> They start to develop trust with the family. The family starts to relax a little bit, whether it's the adults or the children. They start to listen more. Their health outcomes improve. Their stress starts to be reduced. And the children are happy. So what we do at KidVantage may seem very simple. It may look, you come in, it's like a warehouse, we're packing, we're just, we're putting all those things, we're putting them in the bins, we're putting them in the bags. But you are changing lives for now and for in the future. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Here it is. And all of you contribute to our outreach program, and this is how many years, Dave, have we supported? As long as I've been part of outreach. <laughs> yeah. As long as I've been 15 years at Kid Vantage, and you've been a part at least from there, so I think it goes back a lot further than that even. Um, but I do want to point out, because we have youth here, um, the holidays are coming, and what I used to do with my kids was make them clean out their, their toys and their closet and their puzzles and stuff. We send gently used. You don't want to go puzzle with pieces that are missing. <laughs> but, but if you have a game that you hardly used, hardly touched, we can donate it to your site. Excuse me, there we go. Kids, kids
advantage. Um, clothes that are generally used that shirt, which you only wore once in the day, somebody <laughs> might love it. So um, consider giving some of your things out of your closet and, and toy, toy area. Um, can I add to that, Sharon? Sure. So um, I'm not meaning to profile you, but your boys. And um, we need boy clothing more than almost anything, especially size 5 through 14. And if you had a pair of shoes that did not have a hole in them and you had not dragged them going down the hill on your scooter, <laughs> then we would love to get those too. So highest needs right now are clothing for a little bit older kids, especially warm clothing. Um, we need hard goods like strollers and high chairs. And we need um, things for the winter holiday bags, uh, winter wish givers, which are hats, coats, gloves, coats, and of course toys. And, and I would, oh, 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 sorry. Sorry. I was just going to say, yesterday I, I was at the Kelsey Creek uh, Farm Festival, the, I mean, the Fall Festival, mm -hmm. and I was talking to a woman who had escaped domestic violence and had uh, moved to where she lives now in Bellevue. And she said they left with the clothes on their back. She had two kids, two children. And she said, we had nothing, absolutely nothing. And those are the kind of people, you know, you, you hear about people not having anything. But there, there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. The refugees that come, come with nothing except the clothes on their back. The advantage feels to other people's. We do. Thank you, Sherry. So what I was going to ask is, so you did a great job kind of covering part of this question with what's your what's your highest need right now? On a yearly basis, like, is the point of scarcity in your organization, um, is it hours, is it cash funds, is it those, I know new toys versus used toys, you, you distribute and you handle differently. So what's kind of the point that you find, you know, you, you come up short on a year-to-year -year basis where if you if you had people focus on you know one thing, um, you know you could use to round it out. I guess. It's it's really a hard question to answer. Um, so for a couple of reasons, one is need changes. So we respond to the needs of the communities, and we respond to the needs from our provider partners. So some of those, sometimes it's like diapers are really what is most needed, and then sometimes it's more like the things for school age kids. So there's always that. Plus, so besides diaper derby, the majority of diapers that we give out, we purchase. So when you, when, as an outreach um, recipient of, of St. Andrews, that money goes toward a lot of things like purchasing the formula, diapers, um, wipes, and uh, pack and plays, hygiene goods, all of those kind of things are, and the money is probably the most helpful overall for those, and that's because we can both, our purchasing agreements, we buy in bulk, but also we just give out such a high volume so like diaper derby brings in around 150 to 200,000 diapers. This year we're on track to distribute 2.2 million diapers. And um, so, you know, like formula, last year we gave out 6,000 cans of formula. That's three days of feeding each. Those cans range in price from $18 to $40 a can, depending on the child's needs. Um, it is really, that's a big lift to ask in a drive because it's pretty expensive where a lot of times uh, contributors can find things that we need that are not as big of a deal. So for those kinds of things, and those are ongoing high needs always, money is, the, is what helps the most with those. But we don't buy very much clothing. We buy underwear. Um, we get most of our socks donated through Bombas, so we get buy Bombas socks, that's my bitch. Um, uh, and, uh, but most of the clothing is donated clothing, new or gently used. And so the more you can bring in and the more we need, 
we always have a lot of baby, and that's because we get when it's when people donate, we don't have a lot of control of what comes out. Like a couple of weeks ago, I was working intake on a Monday night. We got nothing but cribs, no crib mattresses, but we got all we got cribs. The next week, there wasn't a crib that came in. It's just it kind of comes and goes like that. But clothing is always just a super high need. So toys, you know that you have. I hear you, you, you've got that. So the toys that go into those big bundles are the gently used ones. And uh, what do you put in a bag right now, Liz? About two of them? In a, in, in, a clothing, big, in a big bundle, in a clothing bundle. Uh, it depends on the age. But um, right for at least older kids, because we have very little to give out, uh, we try to put in a craft, a toy, um, a stuffy, a couple books, um, and then a little something extra if we have right. to have it. So you just you saw the, the number of that. So between that and then the new toys, um, we'll be distributing over 30,000 toys this year. So our volumes are such that it's around 25 to 27,000 books that'll go out this year. So we need it from all angles. So that was that's kind of a mushy answer, I know. But <laughs> and I just want to clarify that money's brought in um, none of it will go to purchasing toys. No. So, love to be able to do that. We do get a lot of support. Rick Riz, Toys for Kids, Rick, um, Voice of the Mariners, they give us money every year. We do buy new toys for that. We work with a lot of partners. We just submitted a request for Toys for Tots to be able to get toys from there. But we do not have those in our budget. A good place to get children's books that are can be in good condition. Besides Goodwill, Jubilee, Reach, uh, Children's Orthopedic, etc., is <clears throat> the library, uh, Friends of the Library, especially downtown Bellevue. Mm. And, uh, you know, you can get a book for 25 cents. So, when you're out at the library, anyhow. It's a, it's a, that's a great thing, and then you're supporting another wonderful organization in our community. So. Um, that's that's a that's yeah, a double a, that's a double good. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so those there are things that are in our budget to purchase, and there are things that are not. And those things that are not in the budget um, that we can't raise money for from other places are the things that we need donated the most. Other questions? Well, I just want to say thank you again for this opportunity this morning and um, for all of the support that you've given. Um, and I want to invite all of you, because um, if you're age 12 and up, you can come and volunteer. From 12 to 14, you will need to be one-on-one -on -one with an adult. Oh, yes. but we, we do have um, a volunteer time set up. Oh. I think it's Saturday, December 3rd. Yeah, we don't have a sign-up sheet, but just look for it online, and it'll be on the board. Uh, for intergenerational and we'll put you to work so it's a morning slide in like 9 to 11 so if, okay. they're, if they're over 14 they can just come and volunteer yes okay, awesome. and uh, there's signups online um, to sign up for different shifts uh, we'll, um, we'll be having the sign up for the St. Andrews group on the website this next week and there'll be more information the but you, we're not limited to just at that that one point in time and then I need to, I need before I forget, because I am the director of development, so um, my job is to help raise funds. But I do want to point out that our biggest fundraiser of the year is November 3rd. It is a Helping Kids Thrive luncheon. And um, we still have room for guests and even for table captains. So if you're interested in attending, uh, please go uh, ask me or go to the website and you can just sign up and attend to see you there. It's, um, I think it's going to be really special and it'll be a great opportunity uh, to see all the other people um, in our area, in our community that help support community. Is that a virtual or in person? Oh, it's in person. And where will it be? At Main Bower in Bellevue. And parking is paid. That's a good deal. Oh. That's a good deal. Oh. But we do, you know, do carpool because of all right, thank you so much. All right, I appreciate it.